But she turned out to be an absolute pain in the arse. Come on, Ed. Three, two, one. No, the biggest uh, killer, I think, for any business owner is... So we're just on our way to the yacht. That's not so right. <laughs> the yacht. <laughs> People need a story. We're outside a countess. Yeah. So we thought we'd just do our intro now. Um, yeah. And then we're going to go on the boat for a little bit, aren't we? And see some suppliers. Yes. Um, yeah, it's chucking it down, but it has stopped a little bit. Let's walk down here a little bit with us. Okay. It's really nice and warm in here. It's freezing outside, which is such a shame. Um, We've got two talks so, tomorrow. Very two good. talks tomorrow. <laughs> one at 10, one at 2. And then out for lunch, aren't we? Going to try and tap Oh, yeah, we're we'll going to have some tapas and treat ourselves, seen as well. <laughs> In busy, London. Busy, busy. <laughs> um, so we'll show you a bit of the boat if we can, get some, some faces in it. And yeah, keep watching. <laughs> So I, I feel like I started my accountancy journey, hear the word journey, but I'll call it a journey, uh, quite a bit older in life. So I was 25 when I went back to study in, at college and I was a single parent with two children. And then I got my dream job a few years later in, in a firm in my local area. And when I was there, I learned about zero straight away. I loved it. I loved all the cloud apps and the cloud accounting, but they weren't really interested in it. And I thought, if you can use your phone to do accounting, I thought that was amazing. And I just thought, oh my God, I can do something so different. So I was plotting and planning for years until I finally decided to take the leap. And I just believed that I really wanted to make the accounting industry different and just like be different and be you and it'd be okay. And you can still be professional. We took, we took on a lot of clients very quickly, which I wasn't expecting like loads of clients like we hired in the first year like two people so and we felt like maybe with our pricing as well we i remember giving a discount because a client who was lovely she was really nice but she turned out to be an absolute pain in the ass come on it believing your value is a massive thing like we definitely priced quite well at the beginning but there were the odd few that want the cheapest price and that's your biggest red flag there and the onboarding if they don't onboard quick enough you also that's another massive red flag so if they your gut screaming list trust your gut because um your business will run better for that the biggest uh, killer i think for any business owner is worrying about what people other people think it definitely holds you back you worry about what your clients are going to think you're posting out there or what your employees think i've done it it's normal you'll have imposter syndrome sometimes um but you've just got to ha keep hold of your vision and don't work for cheap prices and undervalue yourselves because you'll end up miserable. However, I, you shouldn't make mistakes, it's not, not very nice. I definitely think you need to make the mistakes and get yourself a base price. You will learn quickly, but you've got if you can learn quickly and change it, don't just learn and go, oh, I've priced it wrong, change it and like make, like make a change as you move forward when you quote again, because the best thing to do is make mistakes, to be honest. So I learned so much from making the mistakes. So yeah, thank you very much. You. And everyone enjoy the rest of your day.
or not? Oh, must be on. Where are they? We need a map. Now we're in the 300, we need to be on this row. Let's look down here. Look at the bus. It's a networking bus. <laughs> Doodle wall. <laughs> Charlotte, don't, don't embarrass me here, Charlotte. Don't embarrass me. That's not three hole in ones in a row. Oh. This is a, such a good. Yeah. Oh. I was just about to do my little big scream. That's a good idea, actually. Oh. <laughs> I knew I was going to get through it, I was going to whack it. Nice. Oh, so in a Saga. Yeah. Half past halfway. How amazing! <laughs> I'm so tired. We're outside. I'm really walking. tired now. I'm so tired. And I've Hello. got one more talk in T minus one hour and five no. minutes. And um, social media. Yeah, on social media, I'd think then. <laughs> I just rock up and open the best. No, it should, yeah. be, this should be an easier one. The first one went really well. Yeah, it did yeah. Like good feedback. Yeah. It was nice. Um, the first one was actually more vulnerable, I think. Yeah, it, it was safe. like good to hear that other people have made the same mistakes. Yeah. And like, yeah. yeah like how we've learned from them and stuff. Yeah, it's good to be open and honest. Yeah. So you can work better. Yeah. So go back in, go and have a wander around, see if we can see any more people, yep. and then get ready. Nip to the toilet again. <laughs> Alright, see you later. Three, two, one, one. <laughs> what are you looking at? <laughs> Hi, I'm Francesca. I'm the co-founder of Future Town Accounting. Uh, we started the business about four years ago now, and my strategy was not that I had one, but I just wanted to share what I was using, like zero decks. I talked about my hobbies, what I was up to. I literally shared near enough everything of my life. <laughs> Um, I will do a video and I never edit my videos. I don't wear makeup very often, I have my hair in a mess, I wear my gym stuff, I talk about my day, talk about my partner, my fitness competitions that I've started doing. I'm sharing that I'm progressing in my fitness and people need a story. And people like uh, people growing, and changing and adapting and showing the real truth growth. And they love that. They love seeing, oh, did you do that 5K run? Oh, did you beat the time? That's what people buy into. People buy people. They don't buy what the latest tax is, to be honest. So I didn't go down that road at all. We do we do post stuff on our future cloud uh, posts and whatnot. So I do believe you've got to have a business uh, back in. Business funding, but they're very quick uh, closer together. But I didn't personally start writing about taxes and stuff like that. And I got quite a good following very quickly, which in turn got me some good contacts on LinkedIn and we've employed great people through doing that as well. And we've got amazing clients on social media. And I, I didn't even realize the impact of personal branding. It, personal branding, I didn't even know it was a thing. And it's massive.